It's Fibber McGee and Molly. NBC and Tums bring you the Fibber McGee and Molly program, transcribed, written by Phil Leslie, and directed by Max Hubbard. Fibber and Molly will be with you in a minute. When acid indigestion strikes, don't wait. Take Tums. Millions of Americans have turned to Tums for don't wait relief from acid indigestion. People in all walks of life carry Tums for record fast relief. When some favorite food brings on acid indigestion or heartburn, farmers in the field carry Tums for don't wait relief. They take Tums on the spot. There's nothing to mix, no waiting. Housewives, businessmen... Everybody knows there's no more convenient, safer relief from acid indigestion. Tums go to work instantly to calm churning stomach acids. Just as important, Tums stop working the moment excess acid is neutralized. There's no acid rebound, just blessed relief. Always carry Tums in your pocket or purse and enjoy the don't-wait relief of Tums. T-U-M-S, Tums for the tummy. Get handy, pleasant Tums today and eat like candy. So economical, too. Only ten cents a roll everywhere. Whew. There. I got the silver all polished. Kitchen's taken care of. I certainly got a lot of work done today with my little man out of the house. Now, I... Hey, Molly. Hey, Molly, I'm home. Oh, dear, I just made it. I'm in here, McGee. I'm back, kiddo. What's new? Just about everything. I've just finished doing the house from top to bottom. Whew. Good. I don't know when I'd put in such a day. Yeah? Floors, woodwork, furniture, shelves. Well, you know, I put in a tough day, too, kiddo. I got everything you sent me for, even if it did take me all day. Good. I'll finish putting these things away and then start the dinner. Good idea. With all that fresh air and running around town, I got an appetite like a fat kid in a candy store. I think I'll just fix myself a little snack while... Don't go in the kitchen. What's the matter? I just finished mopping in there. The floor is still wet. Oh. Well, then I'll just sit here and read the paper. You know, it's... McGee, look out. What's the matter? What happened? The chair. I just shampooed it with some of that new upholstery cleaner. It's wet. Well, all you had to do was tell me. You didn't have to scare me half to death. I'm sorry, dear. That's okay. I'll just sit over here. I'm afraid you can't do that either. I shampooed that one, too. Well, there's still the Davenport. I'll just stretch out... Wouldn't you rather do some work in the basement? You know you still haven't fixed that loose leg on your workbench. Not the Davenport, too. Well, once I got started, I thought I might as well do the whole room. Oh, quite a job, too. Fine thing. I spend a hard day chasing all over town, and I can't even sit down and read my newspaper. I've had a busy day, Molly. I'm tired. You've had a busy day. You're tired. You're complaining. Ha! Why, Molly, you raised your voice at me. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'm just tired, that's all. See there? Even the little parakeet is scolding me. I'm sorry, Birdie. Oh, that's okay, Tootsie. That's okay. You've been working too hard. You, you ought to take it easier. Well, there's always so much to you do. Is, you never used to do half this much housework when we were first married, Molly. How could I with you following me around the house and tickling me all the time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. You sure were ticklish in those days. Uh, How did you ever get over it? I didn't. You were the one who got over it. Oh. Hmm. Are, are you uh, still ticklish? <laughs> now look out, McGee. Don't be silly. <laughs> You're still ticklish, huh? Let's now, 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 don't. Look out. <laughs> You tell him, Bertie. Make him behave. McGee, now stop it. Ah, it's good to see you laughing again. <laughs> Housework must get pretty dull. You need to relax. Look, how would you like to go out to dinner tonight? To dinner? Oh, no. No, no. I'm awful tired, McGee. Besides, isn't this your bowling night? I saw Doc Gamble downtown, and he begged off. Said there's a medical convention in town, and he has to take one of the doctors out and show him the town. Come on, I'll take you out to dinner. Oh, no, thanks. I'm too tired. Ah, Anyhow, my wall small shop is always crowded at dinner time. I'm not talking about the malt shop. I was going to take you out to the sump room at the Ritz Vista. Eat in style. Maybe a little dancing. Of course, if you're too tired... What? The sump room? I'll be dressed in 20 minutes. I'll lay out your good shirt, dearie. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> There's more 
more fun with the McGee's shortly. You have a lot of driving to do between now and spring, and some of it will be made more difficult by the coming bad weather. That means extra caution on your part to avoid an accident. Statistics show that there are more accidents during the winter months than at other times of the year, and it's easy to see why. Not only snow and ice on the roads, but the added hours of darkness and poor vision caused by frost or fog in the windshield all make for danger. But a little extra attention to the rules of driving safety will help you to avoid an accident that could spell tragedy for you, your family, or friends. First of all, be sure that your car, especially the brakes and tires, is in perfect condition before you start. And have tire chains handy in case you need them. Second, drive slowly. Third, watch the traffic signs and obey them. And fourth, signal for all stops and turns. Guard against traffic accidents this coming winter. Drive carefully for your life. My, the sump room is just beautiful since they redecorated it, McGee. Pretty snazzy. This is all French decor, you know. How can you tell from here? Berets on the waiters, you see? Let's dance when the band plays again, huh? Okay, as soon as you order something to eat. See anything you like on the menu? Not yet. Frankly, this French menu sort of baffles me. Let me see that. Capon a vin blanc. Oofs, Mason, Fro, Madge. Boy, they sure got some dillies here. Listen to this one. Cream de mint, M-O-U-S-S-E. What's that? Cream de mint mousse. It's a dessert. Mousse for dessert? I've ate mousse, but I never tried it with cream de mint on it. <laughs> Must taste like a peppermint saddle. Oh, the waiter's coming. Uh, what are we going to order? I think I'll take a chance on this one here. I don't know what it is, but it don't look too hard to say. Well, I'm with you, dearie. Order the same for me, huh? Uh, bonsoir, monsieur et madame. Uh, you wish to uh, place the order now? Oui. Monsieur and madame wish some of this Armand Louis Bonnet D. Charlie Mange. With the uh, Buku potatoes. That's pa? Your French is wonderful. Oui. Uh, monsieur, I am afraid that is impossible. What's the matter? You out of potatoes? Uh, no, monsieur. No, no. But maybe but, they uh, don't have any more Armand Louis, whatever that oh, is. Oh, yes, madame. Uh, we have him. Mm -hmm. Well, then serve him. We're hungry. Uh, monsieur, I would like to oblige, but that is impossible. <laughs> For quoi? <clears throat> well, uh, Armand Louis Bonnet de Charlemagne is not a food. He is the chef. The chef? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, how did I know? He sounds delicious. Uh, what would you recommend, sir? Or, uh, Garçon? Uh, well, uh, if Madame would like, I, I would recommend the Coq Napoleon and Josephine d'Amour en vin rose. Well, that sounds great. What is it? Uh, southern fried chicken. Two orders of that, please. Uh, merci, madame. Oh, this is such fun, McGee. Yep. Do you like this table all right? Is it okay here? Fine, fine. I like to be near the kitchen. It's more homey. Yeah. Not too close to the orchestra. That's what I like. Last time we ate here, we sat down so close, the trumpet player kept knocking his derby in my soup. <laughs> we won't have that trouble this time. Oh, look, the band is going to start. I think... Can you see from here? Yeah. Yeah, I hear him. Shall we dance this one while... What are you looking at? Hey, can you see that table over there by the potted palm? Kind of in behind it there? Can you see him? You mean in the corner there? Yeah, yeah. Can you make out who that is? Well, looks like a very pretty girl. Well, for goodness sakes, it's Dr. Gamble. <laughs> That's him. Ah, <laughs> oh, the sly old dog. <laughs> Had to take a visiting doctor up and show him the town, he says. I wonder who the gal is. Must be a patient. I see he's taking her pulse across the table. Come on, let's join him. Come on. Mom. But I thought we were going to dance this one. Oh, this will be more fun than dancing. Come on. I want to see how that big moose behaves around a girl. Oh, McGee, we shouldn't butt in. Still, it's the only way we'll find out who his girlfriend is. Come on. Imagine old lard bucket with a real girl. <laughs> Probably some little scatterhead that talks baby talk to him. Yeah. Who drink big doctor manners? Who? <laughs> <laughs> She's pretty, all right. Uh, telling me he couldn't bowl and entertain a visiting doctor. Ha! 
boy, will I ride him. Well, Molly, look who's here. Dr. Gamble. Uh, well, McGee. Hello, Molly. Hello, Doctor. What a, what a nice surprise. Yeah, this is a surprise, Doctor. I understood you were busy tonight. Had to entertain a visiting doctor, Doctor. Uh, sit down, join us. I see. Molly, I'd like to present my very dear friend, Dr. Grace Goddard. <sighs> doctor, this is Mrs. McGee. And Mr. McGee. Happy to know you. How do you do, I'm sure, uh, Doctor? Uh, d- uh, d- uh, doctor? Oh, lady doctor, huh? Well, glad to know you, Doc. <laughs> do sit down, please. Uh, we, uh, we don't want to interrupt anything. No, if you here. kids want to hold hands... Sit what? down. Okay. Dr. Goddard and I were just discussing a new method of trepanning, a frontal lobectomy technique that she's developed. Oh. Oh, yes. Yes. Could you try that again and don't drag your feet? Well, it's more of a lobotomy procedure, actually. Exploratory, you know. Diagnostic. Oh, yes. Oh, sure, sure. Dying ostrich. Dr. Goddard is delivering a paper on the new technique at the convention tomorrow. McGee used to deliver papers when he was a lab, didn't you, dearie? Huh? Uh, oh, yeah. Dr. Gamble's made some suggestions. Very helpful. Thank you, doctor. I appreciate them, doctor. It's a pleasure, doctor. You uh, you look quite young to be a doctor, doctor. Thank you. She means me, doctor. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She means her, doctor. Care for a cigar, doctor? No, thank you. Uh, he means me, doctor. Oh, excuse me, doctor. No, thanks, McGee. Have you been uh, dancing, doctor? No, no just, just talking, talking shop. shop. Oh, oh, excuse, excuse me, doc. doctor. She, she means, means you, doctor. doctor. <laughs> I meant both of you, doctor. And McGee and I started to dance, but we thought it'd be more fun to join you two. Yeah, well, we'll dance now, though, if you'll excuse us, doctor. Uh, you too, doctor. Well, come on, doctor. Uh, Molly. Then go right ahead. We'll see you later. Oh, brother, some romantic character he is. Mm. I might have known when Doc had a date, he'd pick some gal he could talk the fracture business with. My goodness, a real lady doctor. So pretty, too. Boy, what a Romeo. He's got about as much romance as a sack of turnips. <laughs> Takes a good-looking girl out on a date, and what does he talk about? Wait, wait a minute. Look, can you see them? He's taking her pulse again. Yeah, wants a doctor always. Hmm. First time I ever saw him take anybody's pulse with both hands. <laughs> Will you look at it? Hey, she must have something in her eye. Doc's leaning over her like he's trying Come to... Come on, sweetheart. Let's dance. Oh, let's... We'll say goodnight to Fibber and Molly in a moment. Here's a reminder about some of the wonderful entertainment that's yours for the listening each Wednesday evening on the NBC Radio Network. There's comedy for everyone when you set your dial to NBC for such stellar broadcasts as You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx and The Great Gildersleeve starring Willard Waterman. Gildersleeve is the water commissioner of Summerfield, and he's always managing to get himself into hot water with Bertie, Leroy, and the Jolly Boys. You'll find that the Great Gildersleeve provides 30 minutes of top-flight entertainment that your whole family will enjoy. Then when it's time for Groucho Marx, watch out. Groucho throws a mean ad lib, and there's a barb at the end of every one of them. Listen and laugh as this Marx man trades quips with his contestants from the studio audience. It's a ride of fun from top to bottom when Groucho Marx plays You Bet Your Life. Also on Wednesdays, listen to more quiz fun on Walk a Mile with your genial quiz master, Bill Cullen. Walk a Mile is a new type quiz with each contestant competing for big cash prizes. You'll enjoy Walk a Mile every Wednesday night on the NBC Radio Network. My, that was a nice evening, McGee. Yeah. We ought to do this oftener. I'd like to go there for dinner about once a week. Mm. How much was the check? Seventeen dollars. Make it once a year. Yeah. Good night. Good night, all. NBC and Tums have brought you the Fibber McGee and Molly program. Transcribed with Arthur Q. Bryan as Dr. Campbell, Rolf Sedan as the waiter, Mary Jane Croft as Dr. Gotti. This is John Wald inviting you to be with us again tomorrow night for another visit with Fibber McGee and Molly. Thank you.
Tonight, laugh with Can You Top This on the NBC Radio Network.